I've inspected this movement on a previous video, so I'm going to get right into working on the items identified in that video. Here I'm polishing the pivots using carbide paper and a glass plate for flatness. Depending on what's needed, I start out with 800 grit and work up to 2000 grit. Then finish polish with diamond tain, which is a fine aluminum oxide powder. A little oil on the steady rest supports makes for a smooth turn. Now that all the pivots are polished, it's time to install the bushings on the time side of the movement. These pivot holes are egg-shaped and in need of bushings. I've got all the pivots polished and bushings installed on the time side. Great, they work nice and smooth. Now to focus on the bushings for the strike side. As you can see, the time side train runs smooth with no loose pivots. The strike side still has a lot of wear on the pivot holes. Definitely time to install bushings. First I'll mark the side of the pivot holes that have the wear on them. Wow, these have a lot of wear. All marked and ready to start the bushing process. Pivots have all been polished. I'll mark the hole in the wheel I'm working on with a piece of tape so I don't work on the wrong one. First I need to file the hole round using the original hole as a guide to work to. If the holes aren't hand worked through to center, the new bushing will be off center. Select a reamer that's right for the hole size and ream it out true. I have other videos that show how I ream the holes for new bushings, so I won't show that process in this one. It's time to cut a bushing. I'll face the brass off. Then drill a hole in it slightly smaller than the pivot OD. Now to use the movement plate to rough mark the bushing length. OD of the bushing will be about a thousandth or two larger than the reamer OD. Time to turn the bushing OD. Just a little more. And a fit chuck in the plate shows it's just right. Nice. I used a jeweler saw to cut it free from the brass rod stock. It's rough where it was cut, so need to finish that surface. I like to use auxiliary jewel chucks to mount the bushings in for further machining. These don't have an adjusting screw on them, so won't be using these this time. This set has brass adjusting screws on them, and it makes facing the bushings a fast operation. The excess bushing material can be extended to just the right point to cut only the excess off. I just need to face the one end off that is in the rough. And at the same time, bring the length to thickness that will fit in the plate. It fits this chuck just fine. Turning this brass adjusting screw, the bushing can be adjusted out slowly. I'll adjust the bushing out to expose only the excess material that needs to be removed. Just a small amount needs to be removed.
Ah, the bushing is ready to be installed. I always press them in from the back side. Just a couple taps and it fits like a glove. Now to ream the hole to fit the pivot. It's reamed from both sides, little by little. Nice, it fits just fine. I'll use these chamfer tools to deburr the hole and create the oil sink. Wow, nice smooth fit. Now to mount it in both plates for a fit check. I always check them in several positions to make sure there is no chance of binding. It runs nice with minimal friction. Well, I've got all the bushings installed, and it's time to check all the wheels to see how they mesh together. Great, they run quiet and smooth, just as designed. This is going to be one smooth running movement. Now to address the bent pivot on this verge. With the pivot mounted in a chuck, you can really see how much it's bent. I'll use a dead center mounted in the tailstock and check the runout of the pivots. With a good pivot mounted in the lathe, there's very little runout on the other end of the shaft. With the bent pivot mounted, it's quite obvious. Something needs to be done. If the pivot breaks while straightening, I can re-pivot it or install a new verge. But if not, then it's good to go. Man, it's really bent. Just a little bit more. Now that looks as good as it's going to get. Now the verge pallet surface needs to be ground and polished. Just look at the groove the escape wheel cut into it. It's important to keep these movements lubricated to prevent excessive wear like this. I'll hand work it with this stone, then polish it. The teeth on both main wheels are in great need of help. They're badly worn and cause a lot of friction in this condition. Making new wheels is an option. It's expensive and the owner doesn't want to mess with trying to find used ones. We've decided to reverse both mainspring gears. This will put to use the unused surface of the backside of each tooth. It'll get it going for another hundred years or so. The whole assembly is held together with these four swaged chisel cuts. Some of the swaged brass will need to be removed. Then the assembly will come apart. 
Then I can separate the wheel from the arbor and reverse the wheel. The click spring and click will need to be removed and reversed on the opposite side as well. Mounted in the lathe, the swaged grass can be safely and easily hand cut until it can be separated. Nice, it comes apart with no damage. I'll need to center punch the rivet so it can be drilled out to release the clip. No way of annoying the rivet shaft diameter. So I'll start out using a small drill bit, then slowly increase drill bit sizes until separation of the rivet head happens. Great, a perfect rivet head separation. You know the hole was right on center when the remains of the rivet head stick to the drill bit. And the click can now easily be removed. Nice, no damage to the click. Now the rivet can be punched out. I'll need to fabricate a new rivet. I'll file the click support wire until it's thin enough to free the click spring. Now that was easy. These dividers will work to locate the rivet center on the rivet arm. Using this compass I'll draw a circle, same size as the center hole in the wheel. It's a quick way to center the dividers to help locate the rivet hole to the reversed position. Now center punch the arm. This is going to work out slick. And size a drill to the clip. This bit will work just fine. Now that the rivet hole is drilled through, I use a slightly larger drill bit to counterbore. This will lock the rivet in place after it's pinned. I'm moving along just fine. Now to fabricate the click rivet. First face the end. Now to cut the OD and length. Click fits on just right. Now to cut the rivet relief countersink. When shaping the head, I always like to make them slightly convex. This prevents any possible binding of the click during the peening process of the rivet. It sure turned out nice. And again, it fits like a glove. I'll put a piece of an old mainspring under the click for clearance. It's about 10 thousandths thick. The click needs to operate free with no chance of binding. Pinning the brass rivet takes a lot of light hits to get a quality job done. Always hit the rivet and not the gear arm. I can feel the rivet spreading and smoothing out flush with each hit. Small light hits allows the brass to flow better into the counterboard area of the arm. This keeps the rivet from becoming loose and wobbling around in the future. 
The head of the hammer needs to be slightly angled in a circular motion with each hit. This makes the brass metal flow outward and feathers the leading edge onto the arm of the wheel. Nice smooth transition, no rough burrs to deal with. We get this shim out. Nice, pretty moving fit on this clip. Now time to mount the click spring. The holes will need to be countersunk on the side the mainspring mounts on. I'll mount it using the soft annealed wire. I've pinned one end of the mounting wire forming a head on it, so it will lock into place on the wheel. Now the countersinks. The wire fits nice. It'll wrap around the click spring and lock it into place on the arm. Now to press the head of the wire in flush with the countersink. Nice. It fits flush on the arm with no burrs. Now to press the click spring in flush into the countersunk hole. Bend the mounting wire around the click spring. Cut it to length. File the end flat. And now finish the bend of the wire to lock the click spring into place. The paper keeps it from defacing the wheel. Nice. Now mount the arbor. the retaining washer, and it winds nice and freely. Now to swage the brass to hold the assembly all together. I'll use this small chisel shaped punch to form the brass. I give a twisting motion to the punch to help form the brass over the washer. This really turned out nice. These teeth should last well into another hundred years. The trunnions on this lantern pinion need to be replaced. 
the pivots polished up to a mere finish. I used a chelation process to remove the rust and it worked great without damaging the steel. To open the holes in the shroud, I'm going to use the screwdriver. It's been handworked the same diameter as the trunnions. There are other ways to remove them. I find this way fairly non-destructive to the shrouds. The worn areas on the trunnions cause friction on the mating teeth. Inspecting the new trunnions before they're installed. The new replacement trunnions I fabricated are within a half a thousandth of each other. That'll work out just fine. Nice, they slip right into the shrouds. Now to close the holes in the brass shroud over the ends of the trunnions. This lantern pinion has one trunnion that is either chipped or worn. Could be from rust, but it needs to be replaced. The rest of the trunnions are serviceable, so will be left alone. Nice. The new one slides in like it was always there. The mainspring on the time side has rust damage on it. The corrosion seems to be shaped like worms. I wonder if someone in the past rinsed it with water and let it air dry. Either way, the corrosion is fairly deep and could cause a breaking point in the future. Best to replace it. So the new mainspring is installed, just finishing up the final assembly. Third wheel. Escape wheel. Verge. Rear plate. Nice, all assembled. Time to oil the movement. This is the strike side. The time side isn't oiled yet and it's already running. It's a good sign when they run with no oil on them. This means it's a very low friction movement. It's a sort of testament to the pivots, gears, and pinions, all being in perfect alignment and good shape. I'm sure it helped a lot when I polished the pallet surfaces of the verge and the pivot. Excellent. Looks like the strike side is coming to life as well. Before I ship it out, it'll spend about a week on the test stand to make any final adjustments. It's now a fine running machine. As they say, it runs like clockwork.